A classic little brown box from China containing yet another light. You probably guessed that from the thumbnail. This particular light is fairly stylish. It's designed to mount the wall and it's very stereotypical of these units. It's got a, a rectangular plastic section with rounded corners. It's got the metal box in the back and then this metal plate that's just stuck on the front. I'm guessing that's for visual effect. I don't know if there's a hole routed out through this. We'll find that out afterwards. It has the usual things. It's got the wall mounting hardware. It's got the classic little 3 watt style power supply inside. This one says power at 3 to 7 watts. So it's a, it's putting out output 3 to 30, uh, output 9 to 30 volts, uh, 230 milliamps. And it'll contain one of those little midget power supplies that you often find inside the sort of um, lamps, the actual sort of Edison screw and beanie cap lamp. So that's interesting. I wasn't expecting that. The front must come off to reveal some screws then. Okay. So if I plug this in, let's get the quick test in. The cliff quick test. I've already measured the power. It measures 3.4 watts. Uh, power factor is 0.55, which is really pretty typical for these sort of things. And the current is 25 milliamps, and it looks okay. You could mount it vertically, you could mount it horizontally. The main issue with these things is uh, the fact that the metal box is not grounded and the separation of these little power supplies is debatable. It doesn't leave you a lot of room in here once the power supply is in. So let's uh, get this out of the way. I had to show you it lit because otherwise people would have complained. So, uh, I can already tell what's inside because if you look closely, let's uh, get down here and take a look, you can see that it is just a loop of LED tape in here. Probably the same type of LED tape that's used on the, uh, the ceiling lights that have the disc of plastic and then the ring of LEDs around the edge to make them sort of light fairly linearly. Um, is this front going to come off easily? I'm going to burst it, am not I? Well, if I burst it, I burst it. That's really... Oh, actually, you know what? Is it going to come off easily? It's not. It can't. Have the, oh, actually, you know what, it can. I might be going about this the wrong way here. Where's my long nose pliers? I thought those might have been welded in, those little nuts in there, but I think they're actually uh, onto studs on the front plate. That's interesting. It makes it kind of adaptable. It means you can put your own LED tape in. And it also means that if you have a mobile home or just want a backup or end up with a 12 volt lighting system. Let's get rid of this hot milk glue. It's in the way. It means that technically speaking, let's unplug this. Is it keyed? Mm, not really. Yeah. It means that you could put a low voltage tape in here and just run this little light at 12 volts. That makes it more versatile. So let's uh, get this nut off. And this one, they're quite stiff because they've been painted after they've been uh, put together. And we'll see what the construction's like. Oh, that's quite neat. That is really neat. Look at that. Uh, let's get uh, down closer to this because they have routed this out so that the LED tape sits into a channel that is very neat. It also means that uh, it's kind of wasteful that they've got a light that just kind of uh, points sideways in here. I'm guessing they just lost the rest and there's room enough to actually lose a bit more. I wonder if this is used for other uh, styles of lights. Well, that makes it very easy just placing that in. I'm also noticing something else here. Um, this LED tape has cut points. So it's very clearly cut to length. Now, what voltage does it operate at then? Oh, you know what? Have they bridged across the end to create a series circuit or something like that? What have they done here? It might be that you can cut it to length and then bridge the end and these LEDs are in series. 
and that would allow, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15, hold on, let me do the math here. If that was 15 times 3 equals, uh oh, 15 times 3 equals 45 volts, is that within the range of this unit? Um, it says up to 30 volts. I wonder what that is then. Or are the LEDs wired in series parallel combinations? I suppose there's one way to find out, and that is to uh, get the bench power supply on and turn the voltage up and dab it on and see what I can find. Or I could just plug it into the power supply, power it up and see what voltage across it. That would make sense as well. Let's do that. It also has that little extra excitement of uh, poking around with live stuff. The tape passes through this hole. That's also quite clever. It's very modular. Right, bring the power supply back up again. Calculator out of the way. Quick test. Meter on standby. So let's uh, plug this together. Hopefully get the right polarity. Keep you in mind that this might not be, I would hope, given its construction, the metal plate and everything like that, that this is isolated from the mains. But let's presume, as always, it's wise to, that it's not. Just as a precaution. So uh, let's uh, pin that down with that. And we'll measure the voltage across those uh, bits of tape. So let's bring in the meter. Let's turn it on. Ooh, it's bright. I wonder if it pushes the LEDs really hard. I guess we'll find out shortly. So I'm setting this to 200 volts. And I'm going to probe. Well, let's probe across the pads. Let's try and get across the connector. No, I can't get across the connector. It's going to have to be in the end, and that's going to short something out. I'm, I'm going to short this out. Will it be sad when I short it out? Will it go bang? The voltage is 9 volts. Is it 9 volts all the way along? I see another little connection pads here. 6 volts. So these must be parallel sections that you that loop along in series and then you just bridge out the end to actually... All right, okay, so the current that's going through that, let's uh, check the current. Let's use a little uh, dinky clamp meter for that. Will be divided effectively by one, two, three, four, five LEDs per section. So let's turn the meter on here. Uh, choose DC, zero out, 200 milliamps divided by the five LEDs is 40 milliamps each. That doesn't seem too bad because um, they are sort of designed for the sort of brighter, higher current operation. That's interesting. I guess ultimately by doing that, they can use the standard sort of uh, low current power supply with this sort of variable voltage range here. And it just lets them... I'm just looking at this and thinking, is it really connected? That way? I guess LEDs must be in parallel. Excuse me, just fluffing about here. I'm just, uh, I'm just uh, exploring things. This, is, uh, this video was supposed to be quite short, and it's not going to be quite short because I'm going to end up faffing around. Let's uh, turn this off. Because uh, it's not what I was expecting. They're connected. and Yeah, they're all connected in parallel. Well, they did seem to be connecting parallel. Yeah, they are. Oh, that's odd. Yeah. And likewise, they, they'll be connected that way in parallel as well. Yeah. Okay. So, parallel sections of five LEDs, cut to length every five LEDs, and then just bridge the end with a pad, and uh, each of these parallel sections is connected in series with the next one so that you can just optimise it for the length, for the 
it, the current will be the same regardless of the length you use, but the voltage will vary and will adapt to this current limited supply. That's very clever, that's very neat. So for adapting it for your own use with, say, low voltage stuff, well, already, already there. That uh, LED tape is about 9 volts for that. All you need to do is, uh, if you wanted to run it off 12 volts, is put a resistor in the series. What would the value of the resistor be? Um, if you're wanting to run it at the same, say you want to run it at the same current, um, you'd want 200 milliamps, was that? Um, R equals V, which is the voltage to drop from 12 volts 3 divided by... 0.2 equals 15 ohms you'd use but you you have the choice you could actually use a higher value resistor to run it at lower current if you wanted it in particularly if you're using it in say for instance a trailer or something like that and all you're wanting is a low intensity visual effect that provides sort of night illumination or something like that yeah that's interesting isn't it it's a it's nice construction not what I was expecting. I really was expecting this to, just to be a big hole through with the tape just bunched up in it. And this plate in the front, I thought it was just stuck in the front of it just to hide that. Uh, but it's not. It all seems to be sort of routed out in a machine and then sort of abraded to give it that soft finish and designed to take that uh, LED tape in that nice loop, then pass through. Well, pass through here, go in the loop around that and then just clamp together. That's neat. That's very clever. I do like that just for its uh, for the science behind it, the engineering because they've they've done a pretty good job of that. I think the only one thing that I would have really liked on this is an earth. On this case, you just have to improvise that yourself, I guess. Because uh, even well, let's open this spudger. We kind of know what's in here because it's always the same. It's that same little power supply. Finger cross capacitor, yeah, it's discharged. Uh, same little power supply, little bit of direct for dedicated chip just for the power supply. Is it going to be a bright power? It's not. It's a Z6KL7MOEO. So dedicated little uh, driver chip just for little isolated power supplies. And it does seem to be isolated, but of course you never guarantee it. It does depend on how good the separation is between the windings in here. The output of the power supply has the diode and the little capacitor, just the classic, what you'd expect in that. The input, you've got the bridge rectifier, the smoothing capacitor, absolute minimum of components here. You've just got a couple of resistors, a little capacitor, purely the absolute minimum required to sense the current of driving this and it'll be running at a fixed frequency probably very very typical of what you'd expect yeah that's quite neat lots of uh, new things in that that i just really wasn't expecting quite a nice little light indeed